So we all know that the uh, Tour de France is the world's greatest sporting event with annual audiences numbering into the billions. Um, today's challenge is slightly more niche than that. This is the Outdoor Coffee Championships. Uh, I don't expect it'll be as popular, but it should be no less of a feat of endurance for these champions. So we're gonna start with a medium grind of a Papua New Guinea single origin. And each of the champions, of whom there are four here, of the world's finest outdoor baristas is going to choose his or her uh, his there's no women <laughs> in, in this forest <laughs> um, method and then the winner by popular decree will be given a coveted prize so the first competitor is now brewing up every move is being captured close up on a gopro um, and then we'll be scrutinized by the judges the fifth member of the judging panel here, utterly uninterested in coffee. He's really only interested in sausages. Right here. So Johnny, talk us through what your talk us through what your contender is. So my winning system here is a mocha pot which is currently in pieces. Um, Mount kit stove, I've got a titanium cup, that's pretty much it really. And what, what are you going to be serving and what are you going to be drinking it from? So I'm planning to serve it in this plastic collapsible oh, cup. Oh disgusting, that's going to drop you points. I don't know, you've got to wait and try it first. Okay. Possibly excessive and flamboyant use of two stoves here Johnny, what's the uh, reasoning? This one's just for show really. Oh right, so yeah, you're not using it It's then. not serving any purpose, no it just oh, looks okay. cool. Having two on the go at the same time. Right, step four. Okay, yeah. Which on. is the final step in this multi step process. Okay. We serve the coffee. Let a little bit of air in there as well. Some oxygen. And then the secret is about two-thirds to one-third water maybe a little bit a touch more stirring of course with a titanium spork of course you won't win any points for that because everybody's got a titanium spork interesting uh, using the fork end and not the spoon end there Johnny I think that's part of the secret isn't it's that for aeration it's part of the that's for maximum oxygenation back in the sheath as soon as possible. Back in the sheath as soon as possible when it's been cleaned by my mouth. <laughs> right, hand it to the judge. It's going to be hard to beat. If that was served in a proper cup. <laughs> Last few words are... No, there are no words. So the second entrant, already very impressive for the use of river water, which is still brown, but apparently filtered. Right, talk us through what you're going to, uh, what you're offering then, Carlo. So the, the watch word is traceability. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's very important to really... To understand, understand the origin. The origins <laughs> of all of your ingredients, to, to really honour them. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's why I've decided to go with water that I've retrieved through my own physical hard labour and pumping. We've actually met some of the farm animals that made that yellow water, haven't we? Okay, exactly. The second step is, of course, again around traceability. I need... The to fire needs to originate from your own from rest. From my own labour. We just set that going. I've developed a, a new sparking technique I like to call the flick. Oh! First time, you'll notice that. Tasty. There. One and done, that's the mantra. And then we start start the boiling process. Whilst I'm doing that, I'll just walk you through the rest of my equipment. Decided to go today for a, uh, a percolation method, of course. Sorry, forgive me, infusion method, <laughs> how silly. Uh, using the Ortlieb uh, filter and some Hario non-bleached paper. You'll notice I've created the customary well in the centre and I'm also going to be using a bloom technique today just where a little bit of, of water added at the start just to release the carbon dioxide 
and uh, get the process going in the right way. And then later, I'll be, of course, using my titanium spork. No extra points. But this time, the spoon end. Oh, that's gonna cost you. Controversial. And I will ser be serving my coffee in a collapsible, uh, what is this made from? <laughs> TPE mm. uh, cup. At least it's not a single use plastic. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, again, authenticity dialed up to 100% here. Locally sourced twigs. Nice. You may see some other brewers today who use imported Japanese frippery, where I like to keep it local. All right, we're gonna go for the uh, pre-infusion bloom. There you go, that's it. And then we wait. Typically, I would use a swan neck kettle and employ the, um, the circular Hoffman spiral. But then you'd have to, to carry it to the top of these woods. I'm going to have to make do, I'm afraid, again today. So we'll just go for I it. I hope it won't offend our pallets. Fairly slow, evenly distributed sprinkle. Gas on there still, isn't there? It's a lively coffee. Mm. I think it's a little less rich, but it's cleaner. It's purer. It's a little bit more refreshing, if anything. Than yeah, it's mine. definitely more transparent and I less sludgy. It's probably a, it's probably half a point nicer than mine. I think this is the one to beat. So first we fill the pot from a fresh water source, a tree hung Ortlieb water sack. I'm not sure where this water originated. It's not as traceable as Carlos. What? Yeah, this isn't. Is this a Stockport NCC? This is, this is probably just Stockport council water, yeah. Oh Christ. Right, that'll do. Right, when I said everything in the kit fits into this cylinder, I was not joking. Even the igniter fits inside the kit. Not quite as fancy as Carlo's, but effective enough. Little piezo igniter there. Now, I don't think there's anything you can buy that boils water in the forest quicker than this. So we'll just let that sit there and boil. As you can see, even the, uh, the cafetiere attachment all fits inside. Right, while we're waiting for that to brew, um, I should also declare that this particular solution is served in a silicon cup. I know, I know. Good choice. Having sneered at other brewers' silicon cups. But again, look at it, it all fits into the same pack. Oh, it's boiled. Oh, it's boiling over as well. Oh, oh that crisis. Point's dropped. Crisis. I, think I overfilled it, lads. Oh, I Jesus. overfilled it. That's all right. I mean, I can make a more generous pot. Unlike selfish Johnny with his one man mocker, there's enough coffee in this for all of us. Right. So the next step. And this is, this is one of, around which there's been some debate. We, uh, we add the coffee and let it just sit there for a while. Now, like all outdoor brewers, I'm using a titanium spork. <laughs> and the debate has been around whether to use the spoon end or the fork end to aerate and titivate the coffee. Now, I've gone with the spoon end for one very important reason, which is the fork end has a residual taste of curry pot noodle. <laughs> so just for the sake of purity, this is my choice. I've been very imprecise with how much I've put in. How long are you gonna let it uh, infuse for, Ollie? The longer, the stronger. Where's the nearest hospital? <laughs> Oh, it's meeting some resistance halfway down. Oh God, <laughs> just give it some welling. That's a lot of coffee. <laughs> right, here we go. Coffee you eat with a spoon. Yep. It's murky. 
Hashtag murky. Oh, I mean, I have to say it's the best yet. Oh, that is fantastic. There's a lot there. Melt your eyes, that will. <laughs> Looks like mud. Yep. You'll be making mud when you've drunk that. It's nicer than it looks. Oh, yeah. I think it's third place so far, <laughs> but it's not bad. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now, it's a bit old school, this. I was going to say, it looks more like steel than titanium. This is... Some of the brewers in this forest might sneer. Well, you can sneer at this kind of stuff. but no, I, I, kinda, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sneer. I like to call it... It's, it's more retro. Yeah. They, I like it. From the highly retro to the highly technical specification. Beast man. Cooking on gas. Do you know what I love about this little pot? It's the slightest little thing. Go on then. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes these, these little handles can get hot and it's not even the little red resin thing on there. Because of course, as you lift the handle up, it's just dropping. Oh no, but, but look at this little notch little here. Notch. Just pull it to one side. Oh, and it's up. You can stick a twig through that. Absolutely. Magic. Maybe setting up some form of, you know, glass uh, contraption over here that drips down through into a coffee pot. Um, and then I just thought, I'll just get instant coffee instead. Instant just coffee. Instant coffee. Oh. Let's see how, I don't think this, I think this is irredeemable. Oh, he's gonna pour he's it putting it straight into the, oh! oh. He's gonna contaminate the titanium forever. Oh! It's insane. Yeah, I mean, it's disbelief. It's, it's disbelief. Claude just staring at the ground. Unbelievable. I don't think I could even taste it. It's, it's a little I bit never like, would have believed this if no. someone had said it. A kind of a, a whiff of, of uh, giving up. Heartbreak. A giving up, I think. No, not in my cup. No way. You got enough in there, Tony. Oh. This is the entry from Sweden and Japan who couldn't be with us today, so I'm representing them and I hope I will do them justice. From Sweden, we have the Trangia cooking pot system. Properly old fashioned, but just beautiful. An absolute classic of design. And then from Japan, this is the real magic. We've got the Snow Peak single walled green titanium mug, which surely is the finest campsite drinking item of all time. And we've got the Mont Bell titanium wire coffee filter, which I think you'll agree makes Carlos look absolutely disgusting by comparison. And rather than sticking two twigs from the forest floor through it, I've also got the Mont Bell self-assembly titanium and ebony chopsticks. Not for you, Claude. Sorry, son. This is probably the slowest method, but then whoever was in a hurry when brewing up in the forest. Also, the absolute opposite of jet boil in that it is anything but compact because you have to lug your mug separately, your fuel bottle separately. But despite it all, I still love this system. Little tip, by the way, these things are a nightmare to light. So what I do is just smear a little rim of lighter fuel around the holes. Because, especially when it's cold, even with a jet, even with a, what are they call turbo flame, these things are a pig to light. Oh, there you go, we've got a flame. There he goes. 
Right, windshield up. Turn your kettle. Let it warm up for a bit. Kettle's boiled. First Ooh, thing to do look at is that flame. extinguish the flame. Crikey. Using this extinguisher. There we go. Put the windshield back on for safety. Splendid, right. How was it Carlo did? I'm not as pretentious as Carlo, I'm just gonna pour it in. What did he call it? Uh, a helix that he created <laughs> when he poured it in. You can hear it dripping. It's alive. It is, isn't it? see it all writhing and bubbling. This is going to taste all right. All the colors of the rainbow. Uh -huh. Including brown. Mmm, very pleasant. Oh, that's the one. That's magic. I already think the Swedish and Japanese um, entry destroys the jet boil. <laughs> took twice as much time, took up twice as much space in my bag and cost a lot more. But, phew, my God. Mmm. It's clearly superb. There's no two ways We're about it. <laughs> but is it good enough to take the crown? And I'm going to say it's a little bit too strong for my taste. Right, the uh, the sun's gone down. The rain has blown in. We're at the end of a brutal day of brewing and judging. I, for one, am extremely high. Um, the judges here have convened. And after many hours of deliberation, it's time for the solemn business of handing over the trophy to the unanimously decreed winner. Smooth. No way. Andrew. And a cigar. Fantastic. The judges agreed that your audacity of bringing Nescafe to a outdoor brew up is thumbing your nose at the coffee establishment. You're the Damien Hurst of the coffee world. And for this, you have won the trophy. There's only one remaining task, and that is for me to engrave his name on this trophy. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Might be time to get out the outdoor kitchen into tent soon. Mm considering this tarp above our heads has turned into an aerial bathtub. Yeah, there's about a hundred litres of rainwater in that. <laughs> That's coming down. <laughs>